so good morning to all of you uh, today we are going to start mechanics of solid and in mechanics of solid today we are going to see what is mean by stress and what is mean by strain before going to start this lecture i'm just going to revise you that what is mean by engineering mechanics okay engineering mechanics is mechanics is nothing but a branch of physics in which we are going to study the various material properties okay and material behaviors so in again engineering mechanics is going to divide into two parts that is solid mechanics and fluid mechanics solid mechanics again divide into two parts that mechanics of rigid bodies and mechanics of deformable bodies rigid body means that body is not going to after applying applying the load the body is not going to deform okay and mechanics of deform body means if you are going to apply the load on bot that body the body is going to define in a deform in the form of deflection in the form of bending in the form of torsion okay so mechanics of deform bodies is this and again mechanics of deform bodies is going to classified into strength of material theory of elasticity and theory of plasticity so strength of material is also going to called as a mechanics of solid okay and mechanics of rigid body again going to divide into statics and dynamics okay statics and dynamics means what when body is in rest position okay in that case we are going to study that body study that is uh, study is called as a static and when body is in moving condition in that case the study on body is called as a dynamics that okay and then dynamics again going to divide into kinematics and kinetics again here kinetics and kinematics means when you are going to study uh, you are, when you are going to study the rotation in that case we are going to use the kinematics and when we are going to study the velocity acceleration in that case we are going to use the kinetics okay and here this part is fluid mechanics again due fluid mechanics is going to divide into statics and dynamics when fluid is stationary it, it is in, in uh, is not moving position that is static analysis and when uh, fluid is in moving case that is called as a dynamics again the dynamics is going to classify into two parts kinematics and kinetics again this kinematics ideal fluids viscous fluids and compressive fluids okay now next what is mechanics of solid means see the solid mechanics as a subject may be defined as the branch of applied mechanics that deals with behavior of solid bodies subjected to various types of loading okay already i have told you that behavior of the solid body subjected to various types of loading here this is called as a solid mechanics it is usually subdivided into further two streams that is mechanics of rigid bodies and simply mechanics and mechanics of deformable bodies okay and here our we are going to see we are here we are going to study that mechanics of deformable bodies the mechanics of deformable solid which is branch of applied mechanics is known as a several times strength of material or mechanics of solid also okay next what is mean by now, now here one thing you want people understand here mechanics of solid means we are going to study the internal force study of internal forces of materials what going exactly going to happen with the internal forces internal stresses in the material okay but first before going to see that to see that first we are going to see today what is mean by strength of material okay so strength of material means see when an external force act on body the body tends to go undergo some deformation due to cohesion between the molecules the body resist deformation the resistance by which material of the body opposes the deformation is known as the strength of material so please understand one thing when external force is going to act on body the body tends to go deformation i will show you suppose one body i have taken skew by have taken and if you are going to apply the load on body okay body tends to undergo some deformation what happen due to this load suppose the body is deformed like this deformation so from top to this body suppose in this color body have some deformation like it is this much deformation 
okay the body tends to go under some division due to collisions between the molecules of the body resistance offered by this uh, resistance de uh, resistant deformation this resistance by which material of the body opposes the deformation is known as the strength of material now to this deformation if body is going to give the resistance due to the molecules cohesion of molecules between in the, in, in the material that's why this is going to resist this is resistance this is force okay so due to cohesion between the molecules the body resists deformation okay due to these molecules okay body resists the deformation this resistance by which material of the body opposes see this resistance by which material of the body opposes this this resistance that the deformation is known as a strength of material means if body is going to resist deformation okay that is called as a strength of material resistance is called as a strength of material got it okay so next after knowing the strength of material next thing before going to start to study the various internal forces or stresses stresses in the material okay we have to understood first one by one what is mean by stress okay what is mean by stress so definition of stress is this the force of resistance per unit area okay the force of resistance per unit area offered by a body against the deformation is called as the stress okay so if you can see this suppose i have applied the force on this body okay this resistance so if this is the p okay force the force i see remember one thing the force is extra the load is external force okay and stress is going to develop internal inside the body stress due to this force stress is going to develop and what is the uh, what is stress the resistance offered by a force per unit area now suppose the force is going to apply on this surface this is b and this is d so force per unit area b into d this is called as the stress see here again the external force acting on body is called as a load or force external load is going to apply okay the load is applied on the body while the stress is induced in the material of the body okay the the load is applied on the body while the stress is induced in the material of the body so stress is going to induce inside the body already i have told you and stress formula here you, we can write like this sigma we can always write stress as a sigma so sigma is equal to force upon area so b into d is nothing but area this area on this area is force is going to apply so stress is going to develop in the in this uh, material or this this body you are going to calculate force per unit area okay so this is per unit area force per unit area b into d is the area of the surface so stress if you want to get the stress here so stress is equal to p by and this force is in newton okay and area in meter square so we are going to use the unit for stress is newton per mm square or we can use newton kn per meter square also we can use it is a newton per mm square also so here in this case p is external force and a is the cross sectional area of the body okay so hope that you understood the stress so i will give the one example that the human bodies if you are going to take some tension due to some problem okay that problem is an external problem so consider that problem is your this load or force and due to that problem in your mind your you, you that force is going to apply it on your mind and mind is going to take the mind is going to take the stresses so that's why always we are going to see this person is in stress the, this person is in stress and stress is because of the external things that external load okay and sigma is your stress p upon area so force upon area we can write stress like this okay 
So next thing here, after knowing the stress, next is the strain. What what is mean by strain now? Now you people understood what is the stress. Stress is the force applied per per area. Okay, that is stress. And then now strain. When body is subjected to some external force, there is a some change in the dimension of the body. Okay, and the ratio of change of dimension of the body to the original dimension is known as the strain. So suppose if I consider this one bar, and if I am going to apply the forces, I am going to stretch this bar here. So what happened after application of this load? After application of this load, the body is going to deform or body the in length is going to increase. Okay, in that case here the strain is going to develop in the body, and how you are going to get calculate the strain? So strain is here equal to change the dimension of body. So this is change. This is L. If I am going to consider this is L, small L, and this is capital L. So this is change in length. So strain always you are going to calculate by using this formula. Change of dimension of the body divided by original dimension of the body. Okay. The strain may be tensile strain. The classification of the strain. Strain may be compressive strain. Strain may be volumetric strain, and strain may be the shear strain. What is mean by tension strain? When you are going to apply the two pull forces equal and opposite direction, in that case, body is going to elongate, and that's why the tensile strain is going to generate in this. Okay. Same thing when we, you are going to apply two push forces on the body. Equal and opposite direction. If I am going to consider this is P, this is P, same intensity of force, same as intensity of the force is going to apply this. This what happened due to this? The force, this member is going to compress. Okay, due to these two compression forces, equal and opposite forces, and the, the strain is going to develop in this case. That strain is a compressive strain. Okay, and what is volumetric change? Volumetric change means when you are this. If, if I am going to consider this is a block, okay, and when we apply the forces on this block, and suppose the volume is going to change, volume is going to change of the block, block. In that case, such strain is called as a shear strain. Oh, sorry, volumetric strain. And she, what is shear strain? Suppose this is one rivet, and this is these are these two plates I have used. And if due to shear stresses, if this is going to fail, this is going to break. Such types of strain we are going to consider the shear strain. Okay. So this is about the strain. Hope you understood. Next type of stresses. We have seen the what is mean by stress. Now here classification of stress: stress, normal stress, and shear stress. So what is normal stress? Normal stress represented by the sigma. Already we have seen the formula. Sigma is equal to P upon A. P upon A. Okay. The normal stress further divided into two parts. That is tensile stress and compressive stress. What is tensile stress and compressive stress? Here you can see. The stress induced in the body when subjected to two equal and opposite pulls. So here you can see this two pulls, equal and opposite pulls, as resultant of which there is an increasing length, is known as a tensile stress. So here you can see if this if, okay, this bar if I consider, and if I'm going to cut this bar here, due to this is the P is the external force, but it uh, due to properties of body, the property is going to resist. This external force, and that is called as the resistance or resisting force. If I am going to consider that is R. Same way, this part also, right side also. If you are going to pull the body, the internal resistance of the body is going to counterbalance or counteract to this force. Okay, and here you can see this. If I am going to consider this to be resistance for this P, this and for this resistance is this. Okay. And due to this, the develop that stress is going to develop. That stress is called as the tensile stress. You can see the formula: tensile stress, resisting of resisting of a force that R is here, resisting force, and the cross-sectional area. Cross-sectional area here A, B into D. Cross-sectional area A, 
resisting force here i'm going to consider p is equal to r why p is equal to r because for equilibrium this p should be equal to r so that's why p is equal to r i have considered so stress sigma is equal to p by a same formula only changes is instead of stress i have calling here tensile stress now next is a tensile strain tensile strain so tensile strain e is equal to increase in length okay the ratio we have already seen increase in length mean uh, that uh, ratio uh, strain uh, formula we have seen change in length divided by original length now here in tensile stresses the length is increased so that's why i have written here increase in length okay divided by original length so here i am going to use formula for tensile strain e is equal to dl by l okay so next here after tensile stress next is a compressive stress and in compressive stress you can see here the stress induced in the body when subjected to two equal and opposite pushes okay pushes as a result of which there is a decrease in the length due to these two pulls so what happen the length is going to decrease due to this pull pull okay so it is known as a compressive stress and here you can see this is p push force resistance is opposite going to act and here also resistance is going to act opposite direction so here for this p this r is resistance for this p this r is resistance okay next now the compressive stress is given by sigma is equal to that resistance force divided by area that is push force into area so this is again p by a stress is equal to and the compressive strain here length is decrease so decrease in length divided by original length so here you can write formula like this dl by l okay so this is about the tensile stress and the compressive stress next is shear stress what you mean by shear stress okay here you can see the stress induced in the body when subjected to two equal and opposite forces so here if i write here this is p two equal and opposite forces which are acting tangentially across the resistance section so here you can see this at this part these two forces acting tangentially to each other across the resisting section resisting section as a result of which the body tends to shear off shear off means it is going to break here from this part this part shear off across the section is known as the shear stress and shear stress is always going to represent as a tau okay so here after applying the forces tangential forces to the material okay this body is going to shear off from this part and due to this the stresses is going to develop such stresses is called as a shear stresses and that shear stresses we can express in terms of tau and shear stresses tau we can write here shear resistance and shear area so tau we can write tau is equal to p by a again so please keep in mind that formula for stress is always force upon area okay and it is going to change in the different ways that is if you if you want to get the tensile stresses in that case we have to consider tension force compressive forces we have to uh, we have to consider the compressive stresses compressive force you have to consider an area the area which is going to cut that area the cross section area we have to consider so this is about the stresses uh, today's lecture what is mean by uh, stress what is mean by strain what is mean by tensile stress what is mean by compressive stress what is mean by shear stress okay so this is about today's lecture next lecture we are going to see what is mean by elasticity and what is mean by